Well, hello there, everybody, and welcome to the Risk of Rain Closed Beta 0.30.1.3. You have no idea how many times I have re-recorded just this little bit so I could get those numbers in the top corner right. Like I said, hello there, everybody, and welcome to the Risk of Rain Closed Beta. This is a roguelike platforming pixel gun shooty thingy game, and it is a lot of fun, and I'm having a lot of fun with it now. Um, as some people do not know what this is or know what a roguelike is, a roguelike game is you start from the very beginning every time and you just kind of build your character up from there. Now, one of the best, most popular examples in recent time would be Binding of Isaac. You know, you'd go in, you'd collect items, and you, well, you'd play the Binding of Isaac. And those items kind of defined your character and you know, what you could do or could not do, and it was all a lot of fun. Now, this game kind of goes with that roguelike thing where you collect items that, you know, you would find here in the item log, but I'm not going to click on that just for the spoiler's sake. And you find monsters, which I am not going to click on just so I do not go into the spoiler territory. And you play as one of currently, currently four characters. Now, this game is not open to the public yet. You had to pay $25 on the Kickstarter, so... Hopefully this will be a good introduction for some of you people who have not played it yet. Now, this game also does have local co-op, and I would be co-oping it with somebody, but it's local co-op, not LAN, so can't really do anything with that. But anyway, let's get right on into this and let's start explaining a few things. First off, you have four of presumably ten characters, which is going to be really nice. I think I'm going to enjoy that, because I already enjoy the four characters that are out at the moment. First up, you have the Commando. He is very, very good with long range and a little bit of mobility. He has a lot of, he has a dive which lets him dodge things. He has a skill that just, you know, lets him shoot his gun. Pow, pow, John Wayne. And he has full metal jacket which is just a straight line. Everything goes right through everything and knocks them back. And that's a fair amount of damage. And he's got suppressive fire. Just constantly shoots his gun and it stuns enemies and does quite a lot of damage. Very run and gun. Run and gun. Literally, he is literally the run and gun character. Now, that is your first character, the commando. The second one you have is the miner. He is very short range, as in he is tiny and he has two pickaxes, which he uses crush and he just smashes bitches' face who are right near him. He, like I said, he is very, very short range, but he has a lot of mobility, more than any other character of these four have, and he has both the drill charge and the back, bla back blast. Drill charge lets him go forward, back blast lets him go backwards, and his to the stars lets him double jump into the air. He can jump once, every character can jump once by default. He can do a second jump into the air, getting even more um, out of the way. Now, as I said, he is a melee character, so that does put him at a distinct disadvantage of being right next to things, obviously probably getting hit, but with the drill charge and the back blast, both of which let you be unable to be at damage, lets him avoid most of that damage if you know how to play him properly. He is very, very difficult. Now, third character we have is Hand D. No manual given for Hand D, because he is all about the hurt. He is big. He is mean. He is a motherfucking tank. What is mobility? Hand D does not have mobility. He literally just goes for hurt and overclock, and he is done. He has his first skill, which is the one that you'll be using most. He just rears his fist up back and punches bitches. That's all he does. And then he's got overclock, which lets him, you know, attack speed by 30%, and it gives his attacks a 30% chance to stun. And it increases in duration when you are attacking things. Now, he also does have drones. Every time he kills an enemy, he gets a drone that he can send out, do a little bit of damage, and get some health back in return. And then he has his last attack, which is forced reassembly, which is where he just pulls out a giant fucking hammer from out of his ass and just beats the fuck out of everything, slams on the ground, knocks it all up in the air, and does a lot of damage. He is, as I said, Got no mobility. He has none of it. Now, overclock does make you move a little faster, but <clears throat> you're not using it for that. You're using it to just punch people away. With the stun combined with the force back by hurt, he can just fight people really up close and do a lot of damage to him. Now, as I said, he does have uh, no mobility, so that does give him, uh, like I said, a bit more of a disadvantage. Like, uh, he's melee, just like the miner, but still. Nothing too bad. Now, the fourth character that we have is the Bandit. Now, this is unlocked by beating the first three levels of the game. He is very, very similar to the Commando, but with less mobility and more just, I'm going to shoot bitches and throw dynamite, apparently. I have not played too much of this character, so I don't know 100% about him, so you're going to have to uh, 
give me a little leeway on that one. His first attack is just blast. He shoots his gun, does 170% damage. Pretty nice, pretty nice. Second skill, dynamite toss. It tosses an explosive into the air. Does 230 damage. And as it does not say on there, it does have a chance to knock enemies back. I mean, it is fucking dynamite. Now his third skill, and this is what makes or breaks the bandit, is Smoke Bomb. He turns invisible. After coming out of it, he has 140% increased damage, and he has a chance to stun enemies on that attack. Now that works with any of the skills, even the one we're about to talk about, which is Lights Out, aka Headshot Motherfucker BOOM! He aims for a headshot, dealing 600% damage. If the ability kills an enemy, all his cooldowns are reset to zero, meaning you can do the whole thing over again. So throw some dynamite, take out a few blasts, smoke bomb behind him, boom, headshot. That's that kind of character, so I'm hoping to play all of these characters for you just to kind of give you an idea about these. I am not the best in the world, so I'm not going to be going for hardcore, simply because it's more pain than it's worth so we're going to be going for normal it also does have casual but we won't be going into that after i play through all these characters just a little bit kind of giving you an introduction not just to the game but to the, each character and sort of the atmosphere of the game we will go back and kind of look at the monster and item logs just so you guys can learn it so dried lake ground zero you can jump move and you can use your abilities i do not have them set to those keys because those keys are a little bit awkward for me but those are the default keys so like i said we're playing the commando over here he has a chance to, uh, he can shoot everybody, he has a dive, and he has full metal which lets him shoot a line through all the targets in front of him. Now, it does not have any limit to the amount of targets in front of you, which is good because you're going to be fighting a lot of people. See, bam, both of them. And he has suppressive fire, which has a chance to stun, and then you're golden. Now, as I said before, this character is based heavily, heavily on keeping people at range. He does not have much health, as you will see when we start playing some of the other characters, specifically Handy who has a lot of health, and, uh, and by that I mean a lot. Now, as you can see, we also get experience every time we kill an enemy, which are those little blue orbs, and then we also get coins, which are those little gold things. Now, obviously it's more like money, but I say coins because, you know, whatever. Now, suppressive fire when you are surrounded has a, uh, has a thing where it attacks enemies on both sides of you like this. Um, it does not do as much damage because it splits the damage that you do in half, one on one way and one on the other. And it's pretty good. I mean, it's good if you're surrounded. That way you can just, you know, suppressive fire and then run away. And I hate jellyfish. I'm sorry. I'm not a goofy goober or anything like that. But, uh, <clears throat> oh well. Anyway, so something not about the characters of the game, because I'm pretty sure you guys are tired of hearing me talk about that, is the shrines. Press A to offer a chance for a reward. 17 coins. Didn't get anything. I have no fucking luck. Second time, we get an ATG missile Mach 1, chance to fire a missile. Watch for a back blast. Now, when we use this, we have a chance to shoot a missile out. See, as there it goes, and it does quite a good bit of damage. And because this character attacks very fast, while the chance may be kind of low, it does um, kind of increase just because of how fast this character attacks. While in normal circumstances with a character like Handy or, you know... You know, the modder would have a good chance. Mostly just handy. He's the only one who doesn't really have a good chance of firing this off, especially early on. Now, that is a chest up there. That is a guaranteed chance to get an item. Um, usually bigger chests with higher gold requirements will give a higher tier of items. Yes, there are tiers. And you see that blue lemur over there? Lemur thing? I'm pretty sure they're called lemurians. Um, he is a elemental one. Now, all of these enemies spawn with a certain pattern in mind. These lemurians can not go over little uh they cannot jump over those they just fall right down or they just you know walk back and forth but when it comes to areas like these they can just go up and down them no problem they don't jump they just kind of climb so that's how you're supposed to handle them is usually just kind of getting them that range if you're that kind of character and we got the smart shopper enemies drop more gold that's very nice let's hope we can kill these guys before they get a little bit too close got him all right there we go, got him. Now those big guys right there, they do not have a problem with going over small little spaces like that. They'll one run right over it, but they cannot jump, nor can they climb like the Lemurians can. They, they really can. Now, the aim of the game is mostly just to, to survive and get as far as you can, and the farthest like that is only like maybe three or four levels in. It is a very, very hard game. Do not expect any sort of hand-holding with this game. You will not be getting it. And... I say that I say that playing games like Dwarf Fortress and going out for as hard as games as I can find 
Um, this game really, really, really does not hold your hand uh, at all. Now, another thing that you might notice up in the top corner, the difficulty is currently set to very easy. Yeah, you set it to normal when you start. No, I set it to normal. I set it to a normal mode, but the difficulty is changing based on how long you play. Now, you also see a timer up there, three minutes, uh, four minutes now. Um, and that's constantly going up, obviously that's the timer, but what that is more indicative of is, well, every five minutes, give or take, I think it's more like uh, four, four and a half minutes, the difficulty raises. Now that, all, that affects the bosses that spawn, that affects the enemies that spawn, the higher that goes up, the more enemies will spawn. As you can see, when we first started it up, we really didn't have that much stuff coming at us, but now it's a little bit more than that. Uh, kind of a lot more than that, actually. So, you know, that's just one thing that it is. And you will see later on, as we go with the higher difficulties, it does get a little bit more crazy and a hell of a lot more chaotic. Which is kind of weird, considering that, you know, we just had that big fight with those Lemurians. But, trust me, it gets a lot worse than that. I promise you. So, there's that. Now, um, also you saw back there, there was a... Uh, you know, we'll talk about that later. Right now, the main thing I'm trying to do right now is just to find these shrines. See, that bell ringing means the difficulty increased, and we got the Harvester's Scythe Critical Hits Heal You. Please don't make me spend all my gold. There we go. We got the Guardian's Heart. Gain a shield when you're out of combat. Also, I hate fighting more than one of these guys because it's really fucking annoying. Also, I did not want to have to fight that jellyfish while fighting the other guys. Uh, so we're going to have to fight a lot of these guys at the same time now, aren't we? Alright, so as long as we can keep our distance, we should be fine. Shouldn't really be too much to write home about, because these guys can usually go over small bumps, but, uh... One just about that wide is about their limit, so they're stuck over on that. So we're abusing our range as the commando, as we well should be. Let's go down here, see if we can get a, uh... Ooh! We got a safeguard lantern! Drop a lantern that fears and damages enemies for 10 seconds, so... There's that. Now, these guys are extra tall, meaning that they take up more than uh, one block of height. At least that's the way I imagine it. So, as the commando, since we do have the range, we can just kind of get up here. And, uh, get raped by these things as they try to just run up and smash the fuck out of us. But, just kind of abusing the range like that. It's mostly what you're supposed to be doing in this game. Or at least as far as the commando goes, what you're supposed to be doing. Otherwise, if you get too close to people, you will die very, very quickly. Now, we are getting a lot of gold because we do have that one thing that uh, increases the spawn of gold. And it looks like we got a ukulele, and his music was electric. Because he was the Electro Gypsy. On his Yamaha. God, that is an old song. I feel old. That's like when Weeble wasn't doing just weird weird stuff. Now, the ukulele causes electrical sparks to jump between enemies that you hit. I think it's a 60, it's either a 60 or a 33% chance, but where we shoot twice with every attack and we attack very, very fast. The chance has a lot of chances. It has a lot of chances to proc, basically. So we're getting pretty good with the item so far. We've got a lot of rockets. We've got a lot of electricity damage. Now, eventually we probably are going to have to come back and kill these guys to finish off this level, but we're gonna go actually beat this one. As you guys saw, there was a red, kind of almost like pincer looking thing coming out of the ground. That is the end map teleporter, and that takes you to the next level. We got gasoline. Killing enemies sets the ground on fire. And basically, you have to activate that to pretty much go into crazy mode. And that lets you beat the level once you beat, once you survive through the onslaught that it provides, and then go through it. Has a very, 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 very high chance to spawn a boss, and by very, very high chance to spawn a boss, I mean 100%. And it also turns the spawn rate pretty much, I think, two, two or three levels higher. It's pretty crazy, but it's a lot of fun. And uh, it's not something you want to do completely unprepared, which is why I was going to get a few more items before we went and did this. I only had two items when we first came here. Alright, stay alive! There's that guy. So hopefully we should be able to take this guy out. He's very, very slow. Um, shouldn't really be too bad. Probably one of the better guys to fight. Uh, so let's just throw down that lantern. Let's just fuck with those guys over there. It also has a higher chance to start spawning elemental enemies, like, uh, those red and green fire guys over there. They're not the difficult color, are they? 
But, as I said, we are the commander, so we can't abuse the range that we have pretty easily. In some ways, it's kind of bullshit, and it does, um... It does come to bite you in the ass later when you do not have this room to just just shoot people off right right like right off an edge right here because uh, those are pretty prevalent here in this first level but this level does hold your hand quite a lot just look at all that crap over there oh man just so much stuff so much gold that's gonna be pretty much that's gonna be a nice little bunch of experience for us we're already up to level nine that's also something I did say this game has levels. I said it is a roguelike game. It does have a lot of RPG elements put it put put it put into it. Um, I'm not really awake yet, guys. It's fucking it's like seven in the morning here, so you cut me some slack. I'm sorry. Um, even though nobody ever really complains about it when it happens, but still, I gotta say it. It's for the rule of funny. Uh, so as you can see, we have uh, two of the rocket things, and that doubles the chance for rocks to shoot. That's why we are literally we are literally shooting a shit ton of rockets now. Like we've been just going down with this guy just purely off the ukulele so you can jump and shoot in this game and kind of abusing that I don't know why enemies don't just kind of go off little cliffs like that and there he goes that boss dropped a boxing glove chance to knock enemies backwards see if we can get it to proc proc no we didn't get it to proc hopefully you guys will see it later it's a really good item for the commando because what it does is Every time you attack, you have a chance to proc the fist, and when you do, it knocks enemies back. And it's not a, you know, it's not a gentle, like, love tap knock back. It's more like, well, <laughs> you'll see. It's it's actually pretty funny how far it knocks them back. Hopefully, we'll be able to proc it here. Yeah, see, there we go. It's not as much on the, yeah, there we go. See, it just, just juts them backwards. It's pretty crazy how much it actually does, so... And our lightning thing is proccing quite a lot, which is helping us take out these enemies, which are usually quite a pain in the ass. These elemental enemies are usually actually quite hard to kill, so... Not having to worry about that too much, just based on that. And in here in this cave, we have uh, the Fungal Cave. We have some new enemies, specifically these guys. The Black Imps, or the Large Imps, I'm not sure which they are. We'll check that here in a minute. Which will teleport to your- once they get a beat on you, once you start attacking them, they will start teleporting to you if you get too far away. And that can be quite a pain in the ass. And luckily we have this lantern over here, just providing us with some uh, fear and some damage as they get close. I do like that item. It's not the best item in the game, but for starting out, especially as the commando, it's really, really good. I've never really used it too much before. Let's see, we also have these green ghost guys, which do a shit ton of damage, and I'm getting nowhere near them. And I've been using my roll as much. We haven't been able, we haven't needed to use it. We've gotten a fair bit of defensive items just out of the gasoline and the, um, the Guardian's Heart. The Guardian's Heart is an amazing item, and it scales really well with you into the game. Not every item can boast that here, trust me. Stuff like the uh, Money's Purse, especially when you start getting to the, uh, the later levels. While gold is nice, you don't need too much of it. I mean, if you're really unlucky like me, yeah, probably it's be good. Also, as a new enemy, we have these fungus guys. They don't have an auto attack, but when they get close to you, they try to let out spores like that that do a fair bit of damage. And uh, I was gonna, you know, test that out, but died a little bit too quickly. All right, now this is a shrine that instead of costing gold to get an item, requires health. Now. This is a little bit of an issue for the uh, commando, not having very much health, and not having very much health regen either. Also, I accidentally just about tried to use it, and that probably would have been bad. Oh well, but luckily we can keep our distance, and we do get health back on kill, so it's not that big of a deal just yet. See, there we go, he lets out a cloud of spores? I really don't know. We're not going to be messing with that yet, we'll come back to it later. Probably once we clear out this cave and we don't have too much to worry about in the way of killing us while we're using it, we might use it then, but uh, just not yet. Let's kill these guys over here. And there's Mr. Snotman. Don't want to even give a fuck about him. Yeah, we'll just take him out from a little bit of a range, but yeah. Commando, very, very uh, range orientated, very fun. Was the first class I played, was one of the only two out when I played, him and the Miner. Um, there's not really a lot I can say about him besides shoot shit. 
and play smart. If you get too close to enemies and you let yourself get uh, just bum rushed, you are going to die as this guy. There's really no question about it. But in cases like this where you have a little bit of space between you and who you're fighting, you can pretty much just outrange them every time. And this map and the first map, it's 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 a bit easier. And I just took a little bit of fall damage, but luckily we have the Guardian Heart, so it's not that big of a deal. Uh, so hello. And I just missed that. And it looks like the difficulty is raising again. And I fucked that up again. Let's just go up here. And I fell again. I am uh, I am just showing just how shitty I am at platforming. My bad, guys. All right, so let's just go over here. Jump down. Shouldn't be too hard. Maybe we'll find a uh, another shrine over here. It should be good. And there's another health one. I fucking hate the health one. This is the commando. All right, so it looks like here we've got one of the other features that we haven't run into. It's the shop. You have three up to six options. It's usually three or six. I've only seen three or six. And you can either it's a random option or just you know whatever these two are. Random options are. Very, very random, and you can get two, three, or even none of them. It just depends. And and this one, I'm going to be getting this item. It's the Soldier's Syringe. It increases attack speed, and I'm pretty sure I don't need to explain why that's a good item on this character. And we just throw down this right here. Keep these guys back. Now, most items also do have a 40 to 70 um, second cooldown on them. This one has, I think, about a 40. I'm not 100% sure, but it looked like it was 40. And it looks like we get the life savings and gasoline. We're able to get both items from this without having to waste too much health, which is good. Now, I really don't have too much in the way of health regen, but on the commando, it's not really that big of an issue. I mean, I I'll be honest with you. It is good to have health regen um, on every character, having a little bit at the very least. And that's kind of what I consider the heart to be. But as far as a lot of health regen, which I could have gone for, that one egg looking thing, that was health regen while you're standing still, but this kind of character is meant to be moving a lot, and honestly, if we can't life steal it back by just killing enemies, chances are we probably are going to die anyway. Standing still is not really what this character is supposed to be doing. <laughs> also, we have a lot of gold. I should probably be trying to find my way to the teleporter. Oh, Harvester Sickle. Heals you when you get critical hits. Now, I do not think that gives you the chance to get critical hits. I think you need things like the glasses and other items to do that. But, uh... Just roll through that. Kill this jackass. And then I'm shooting the wrong way. There we go. Get rid of him. We did not get anything. And then we got another life savings. Really? Also, here's the teleport. Let's activate that. Let's send things into crazy mode. Over there is going to be our next boss, the Ancient Wisp. Should be pretty easy to kill. Oh, and there he goes with that. He's just a crazy little bugger sometimes with all that. But he is affected by our knockback, which which is on our glove, which which is just hilarious because he's not getting any closer to us. And I would normally count this as broken, but my god, it's hilarious. So we'll just keep this guy back as much as we can. He's kind of a pansy boss, so not going to be too much from this guy. Only 17 minutes in, difficulty hard. Where did he go? God damn it, he hit a geyser. Alright, we'll put this up. He's also affected by that as well. Go figure. Also, we are surrounded by Lemurians. Now that is... This is dangerous. That is very, very dangerous, actually. Um, Lemurians are, well, not incredibly powerful when they get the elemental attributes on them. They are very, very fast, and they will catch your ass if you give them the opportunity. Alright, so let's just roll away from that. We did take a little bit of damage, but nothing that uh, isn't recoverable. We've still got 15 seconds to go before the respawn rate turns back to normal. And by normal, I mean non-existent. Alright, so let's just hopefully we can uh, not get any distance on Jesus fucking Christ. That's a lot of people. That is definitely a lot of people. Okay, so let's just use this to our advantage. Take out these guys. They can't get anywhere near us. They can get kind of near us, but can only do so much. And that is an elemental imp guy. That is not cool. That is not cool at all, guy. Stay the fuck away from me. Dodge as much as we can. He dropped a lot of stuff, too, so... We have 35 enemies remaining. 
Oh man. I was hoping I would knock some of them off. Uh, phew. And I think I got him. What do we get? Another Guardian's Heart. Hot damn. Alright, so let's just try to dodge over here. Keep as much distance without getting blown the fuck up as we can, and we'll just drop that, even though we really don't need to at this point. And he will be coming back. Alright, so we've got 23 enemies remaining, and they should all be clustered up over on this other end. Who oh, buddy! And I think we still have a lot of this area that we have left unexplored, so we will need to come back for that. Oh, that's a lot of people, and I just pissed them all off. Uh, doo -doo -doo. I'm not over here. There we go. That shock thing is amazing. So we'll kill you while you're down here, bro. Sorry, man. There we go. Got away. And I don't know what. Oh, yeah, the gasoline is killing them. I forgot when you kill somebody, we have the gasoline thing times two. Alright, so we'll just put this up. Give us a little bit of breathing room. We should only have maybe one more guy in. Yeah, that's it. We just need to get to the teleporter, but we have a lot of extra gold. Let's go see if there are anywhere else uh, chests. So we'll go get those. And, uh,. Hopefully everything will be all right. I do love these guys. They're just, they are really just fun to play with. It doesn't look like there's anything up there. Nothing. Oh, wait, hold on. I lied. I lied. Ah, uh, but we got to go up the other way. Map generation is uh, not random yet. That is supposed to be something in the future. Also something in the future is mod. Really? Really? Okay. You know. Whatever. Maybe I do have to, Oh, I know what I have to do. Okay, I get it now. Now, there are some chests like this one that if you do not have the right character, you cannot get. And uh, apparently I can't get that because I do not have the miner with his double jump. That or I don't have an item, which is the jet pack, which gives you the ability to double jump. Yeah, and that's not going to be high enough. That's not going to be anywhere near high enough or close enough. Which is kind of shitty, but eh. It's, I guess it's just perks of having certain characters in certain scenarios. Now, chest placement is random, and this over here is a goat's hoof, which increases attack speed, random, and a jar of souls. I want the random. And that is a bustling fungus. Heals quickly when standing still. Neat. It's a pretty good item. Not the best item for this guy, because well, we're not going to be standing still too much, but still, not terrible in... Uh, all aspects, and I'm pretty sure we've got everything. So let's move our way down to the third area. Our difficulty is, as I said before, constantly going up. We are in very hard, and we're only about halfway there. So what was that? I thought I heard something just like, boof, you know? It's always really disconcerting. This place is, this place has a really spooky atmosphere, all things considered. Oh, I missed. I didn't miss that one. Oh, well, yeah. There is no flying in this game either, so for stuff like that, you just can't kind of just fly over all the enemies and be magical and fun and stuff like that. But you can get some pretty crazy air. The geysers combined with uh, jetpack items you can found, find. And also combined with the, uh, what's his name, the miner, can get you some pretty sick air. Alright, so we're on the third area, the frozen tundra, and um, I know I'm not desynced, I just hadn't said anything. And so we're going to be finding the clay men here. These guys are really fucking annoying. Because they combine the annoying attributes of the lemurs at just getting at you with the annoying attributes of the imps, which just run at your face. And I just wasted my full metal. There we go, used it that time. And we got a, uh, oh, that guy's not going to be good. That is an a explosive elemental... Snow Golem, and he is going to hit very, very hard. So we're just going to ignore that. Now, when I said that some of these levels are going to get a little bit more unfriendly towards... Uh, yeah, yeah, he just teleported right on top of me. A little bit more unfriendly to um, longer range characters. This is what I mean. These guys are teleporting to me, and we don't have that much space. As we go down, or uh, depending on where you start... My God, this guy has so much health. I don't even know if it's worth fighting. You know what is... Ah! Hi! There we go. As long as we can keep our distance from this guy, we're good. We're golden. We're golden! 
So, Imp, get off me. Ow, oh, that's two of them. Fuck it, I'm out. See ya. As long as we can keep our distance from those guys, we should be fine. That M guy's following us, and I fail. Alright, anything from this? Uh, let's see, anything from this? Alright, we got Fire Shield to retaliate on taking heavy damage. It's too bad we are playing as this guy, and heavy damage would kill us. Alright, so I'm gonna switch up my skills here. Instead of having the, uh, the fire thing, we get the Unstable Watch, which gives us the ability to pause time for 10 seconds, which may not seem like a lot, but on a character with a lot of attack speed and a lot of just everything, I just took more damage, and we get a random boss. Now, this is something that happens when you get to some of the later levels. It's a little bit annoying, but luckily it's just a giant jellyfish this time, so really not all that bad. We can just kind of sit in here in the middle of them, dodge those, and then just keep going at them like nothing ever happened. See? No harm, no foul. Except for when these clay men come up to me and they, they start trying to step up to me. Ooh. Uh, I don't know. It says out the time freeze thing. Works pretty well. I like it. I mean, what is it going to do? Not freeze time? Come on. But uh, we also do have the item called the Bustling Fruit, which heals us when we're standing still. Sadly, and this is probably one of the biggest faults of that item, is that does not apply when you're standing still and shooting. You have to literally be doing absolutely nothing. That is a teleporting bison that is going to try to headbutt me. Go away. I don't like that. And there we go. We got him, but we still got hit by uh, the jellyfish's bullshit. And we got the boxing glove, so let's go ahead and turn this on, because I am already done with this. Place that's trying to rape me! And somebody is shooting missiles at us. Okay, let's try to just kill these guys before they take this too far. So we got the stone golem up there, as you can see, he is not the normal color. He's not that weird gray color. Also, this guy is pissing me off. Oh. Jesus' tits. Oh, those teleporting bison are not kosher. They are not kosher at all. So I'm pretty sure we can shoot the golem from here, unless there's something in front of him. So, oh shit. Well, hello, bison. It's good to see you again. Let's pause time. See if we can get as much damage on these guys as we can. They can't move in this mode either, so it's probably one of the biggest downsides of this. Now, this one does have a little bit of a longer cooldown. They are now alive again. Those yellow guys <laughs> rape characters like me, just simply because they do teleport to you and do a massive amount of damage. Also, maybe I should not have activated that thing. Maybe that was a very, very bad idea. Maybe we can make it work. Maybe we can make it work without dying. Maybe we can get up here and not die. Oh, shit! That wasn't a platform. Are you serious? Oh, damn. I thought we were, like, right on the platform and now we can jump on it, but no. No, we didn't. Well, everybody, that is uh, Risk of Rain with the Commando. We'll be making uh, a few more episodes just to kind of show off the other characters, the minor, the handy and the bandit so hope everybody enjoyed this first introductory episode to let's try risk of rain and i'll see you guys next time have fun out there everybody but actually before we go i said we would go look at the item and monster log and we'll go do that this gives a little bit of a backstory to the game item log is right here there's not too many items now but hopefully this will fill up and considering that the modding tools for this game are going to be quite extensive and even though it is in closed beta they are already adding uh, mod compatibility you know, make your own guesses. So this kind of gives you an idea of all the items that you have found in the game and what each of them does. Like I can click on, uh, like right here, I look at this. It's the Jar of Souls. It duplicates every enemy as a ghost to fight on your side. Now these ghosts are invulnerable and they do last a certain amount of time and they are actually quite powerful, but I had an item I like better, so that's why I didn't get it. And you also have other items like uh, this, which is very, very nice. Infusion. Killing an enemy increases your health permanently by two. Now, if you can get this in the first level in your melee character... Um... Yeah, you're pretty much gonna win. 
Order details contain samples from bears, leeches, tigers, elephants, elephant sharks, sharks, bull sharks, ants, and ant eaters. Simply hook up a dialysis machine along with the necessary equipment and swap out your blood for genetically superior ones. You can add whatever blood sample you want, as far as I know. Just make sure you take the pills that allow the body to accept the new blood, or your body will reject the cost species infusion. Remember that sampling from other animals is a great bias for experimentation. <laughs> That's just funny shit. And you also have items uh, like this thing that I fucking hate, but uh, we're not going to go into that. And um, yeah, that's it. Survive a boss with 20% health. Done. Yeah, okay, yeah, I guess I've done that. Um, yeah, but that's that. Now let's go to the monster log. Right here, the Lemurians. Health 100, damage 14, top speed 14 miles per hour. And we have a couple of uh, just, you know, field notes here. I'll let you read through that. Those are your basic enemies. Then you have the jellyfish. 85 hit points, 7 damage, 25 miles per hour. Also, like the jellyfish, I have quite the sting. Hmm. That's pretty nice. And you can read the field notes on your own. And then you have the rock golems. You can see them being built up there. 300 health, a lot more damage, and a fair bit of higher top speed. And you have the wisps, the sand crabs, which you can see up in the top corner. The tiny imps, which we didn't get a chance to go over in in this video. And then a lot of pages that I haven't gone over. And we just skipped over an enemy that you might be able to go back and see on your own. But I wouldn't be too worried about it. We'll see it in another video. Like I said, hope everybody enjoyed this video. And see you guys next time. Have fun out there, everybody.